Okay, so now that we have the detail page for properties, we can continue and build the landlord page. So let me just go back to the project. I do not have it running right now. So let me just start the server again. Refresh. And then I have it here. Perfect. So to create the landlord page, we can go back to Visual Studio Code and begin by just closing this one. And then we can copy these three lines and open up the file editor or file browser. Um, so just like we have this properties folder there, I want one for landlords. So landlords, or you can call it hosts if you want to do that. And then one more folder with the ID so that we can have a dynamic URL. And then in that ID folder, the page.tsx. So I can just close this, it's a little bit bigger. And then close the return, close the function and export default. Uh, property detail page is wrong. This is supposed to be landlord detail page. Landlord and save. So if I go back here now, go to landlord, just add some random things. You can see here that we are now on the landlord page. Awesome. Okay, so here I want to split the screen uh, in two so that I can have a image of the landlord and a contact button and then I want to list out all of his properties on the right side here. So we can begin by going back here and creating a div for the grid. So div class name give it a grid and grid calls one for small devices and if you're on a medium or greater or larger then we say grid calls four and also a gap for we can just close that div and then we can begin with the left side where we are going to show information about the landlord so div or a side to be better or more correctly semantic and give us a class name of call span one and mb-4 so this mb-4 will just be there if we are on a mobile device then we get some space between this and the other one below here so if i just add some random things there and a div here for the right side class call span 3 uh, padding left uh, can be set to zero on small devices but on large when we have these two next to each other we can have a md colon pl6 whoops can move this up again there properties so can you see here that I split the screen perfect and if we make this small you can see that it's jumping below there great um, I want to have this to be a rounded corner at the border and some shadow so after this inside here I want to create a new div this is a class name of flex and a flex column because then it's easier to have things centered inside here items center and some p-6 that have space in both directions uh, rounded xl so that I have rounded corners on this div give this a border and a border gray 300 set the color for the border and a shadow dash xl so then i can close the div and close it again correctly after this text nice so now we see the border with the rounded corners you can also see the shadow perfect and since we used the flex call and flex also item centered you can see that it's automatically automatically centered in here and when we add more things in here for example a p and a p you can see that they are below each other but still centered great anyways 
on the top here I want to have an image so image and the source can here be slash profile underscore pick one dot png I think that is the correct name profile pick one jpeg sorry and uh, we can set the width for this to be 200 we can set the height to also be 200 so this is now a square image uh, alt land lord name and um, we set this to be a class name of rounded full so that we know that it will be around still get an error here because we do not support this blah 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 it's because we haven't imported it doesn't really say that clearly but I know that's the problem so import image from next slash image and then the warning is now gone so if I go back here now we can see the pretty profile pic uh, centered on the screen and it's rounded full great below there I want the name of the landlord so h1 it is the class name of mt-6 so some space up to the image set the text to be text dash to xl landlord name perfect now below here i want the contact button but this is something i want to come back to contact button because i want this to be a separate component actually we can just make it right now so this would be then contact button just close it like that um, yes we have the warning because we haven't created it we can't import it either because we don't have it but inside the components inside doo -doo -doo, there isn't any good folder so let's just put it in the main folder contact button.tsx we can create another folder for example for landlords but uh, in my case I'm just going to have one component connected to him anyways so um, then const contact button equals create arrow function return p button just for testing export default contact button save and now we should be able to import this import contact button save and now we have the button there nice but it can't look like that so let's do something about that um, I want this to be a div and then we can set the class name uh, py4px6 I want to have uh, this red background so pg air bnb that text should be white and we can set the corners to be rounded dash xl and then in here i can just say contact perfect but we need some space in there so empty dash six nice um later when we make this more dynamic we are only going to show this if we are not uh, if we are on someone else's page and not your own um, also you need to set the cursor so cursor pointer nice and we can have a hover effect so hover bg air bnb dark great if we want animation we can set this to be a transition transition and now you can see it's fading in and out nice okay let's list the properties so what's cool now is that we can just reuse what we did on the front page so if you open up page.tsx in the app folder and just copy this property list and paste it in there then we need to import this so import property list and save um, whoops it's not supposed to look like that um, 
sorry, I need this grid here as well. Like that. Then it will hopefully look a little bit better. Save and yes. So now we can see these. And uh, we do not need the empty dash four. And maybe instead of having as much as five, we can just have three. Great. Um, we are using it like this, but when we make this more dynamic, we are going to pass in, for example, here landlord ID, and then we put in something here, um, so that we can get the correct properties from the back end and not just get every one. Um, I think this should also now be ready for mobile devices, almost. We do not want this space here when we are on small screens. Um, so that should be call the span gap for. Need to check what this where this comes from. So it might be this grid. span one yeah the problem here is that I'm using call span one on this and call span three on this so on smaller devices we can say call span one and that is also true on small devices but they should also say call span one but on larger devices it should be call span four so if I save now they are the same width Perfect. So we can say that this is now mobile friendly. So if I now go to the to-do list, I can set this task as well to done. Nice. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. Okay, let's just jump right to the next one, which is my reservations. And then Let's just have the project open here, go back here, and then we can begin by making a copy of the top here, because we are re reusing some of this. Go in here, close the components, and then create a new folder called My Reservations. And then in here, page.tsx. So hopefully now you start to understand how the URL router is working and how the URLs are generated. As you can see here, this will now be the URL and then next.tsl, jsx will automatically find this page.tsx inside there. My properties, blah. close this one. We can rename it to my reservations page. Export default like that. I do not think I want to use any of these two, so it can just be like this. And if I then go to my reservations, then you can see here that we are on the page. Great. So at the top here, I just want a simple title saying my reservations. So let's create a div for this, class name, um, pt pt6, so there is some space at the top, pb2, and then here, just h1, class name, text 2xl, my reservations. Okay, now I got the error here, unexpected token main, it's because I forgot to close this div better than we have the title as you can see we got some space at the top there um, we could maybe just clean up the HTML for this a little bit just have the h1 and we can say margin top 6 and margin bottom 2 so it still looks correct but HTML is a little bit better and then below here I want to have a grid of your own reservations where you will see the image of the property. Um, 
see the name of the property, the check-in date, check-out date, number of nights, and the total price. So let's begin by creating this div. Okay, so here I just create an empty div for now. And then I'm going to create the HTML for one of the reservation. So div class name p5, so there's a space in here above, below, and on the sides. I want to have an empty dash four, so there's more space up to this. But also, since there are many in this list, we have space between them. Grid, grid calls four, gap four, shadow dash md, border and border gray 300. Let's save it for now. Then you see here what this is going to look like. At least in the beginning, we need some rounded corners on this. So rounded XL and save. Okay, and then on the left side, I want the image of the property. So we can have a div class call span one. So we take one of these four columns. And then we create a new div class and give this the relative option and overflow hidden because here we want an image inside aspect square and round rounded dash xl now we can set the image source and that can be the name of the house that we have in the public folder which for me is beach1.jpg um, we can set this to fill out the all available space. Uh, set the class name property to hover and scale 110. Sorry, scale 110. Object cover and transition age full w dash full. Last but not least, we need the alt tag so beach house now we can close the image this is already imported there but i need to close one div to make this happy so save and go back okay so now you can see here we got the hover effect same rounded corners everywhere and we have the space there nice so then we want to show the rest on the right side so div close class name call span 3 space dash y2 because we want to space between each of the elements in here h2 class name margin bottom 4 so have even more space between this and the other than the rest of them and text dash xl property name great and then below here, I want to show the check-in date. So at the paragraph and then the strong element, check-in date. And then here we have the reservation 14 to 2024. Nice. Copy this one. Check out date the 16th. And then you can just add some space down and say here number of nights which will be two after my very good calculations strong total price 200 okay oops forgot to add uh, this one and some space okay so this is basically what each of the reservations will look like. If I copy, paste, then you can see more of them. Um, but instead of using margin top four on this one, you can actually in this div rather say class name space dash y4. Great. But this needs some more space below. So margin bottom six. And that means that we can say my6 instead, since it's both above and below. Great. Um, 
I don't think this is mobile friendly right now because on very small devices the image is very small so maybe I want to move it up there and to do that we can say grid calls 1 and then on larger screens we said grid calls 4 that means that this should also say call span 1 and md dash call span nice so now it looks better there like that and we need to do the same thing on the one below so just copy everything paste it like that nice okay so that was my reservations page um okay we can add a button here as well so that we can go to the property um div class um, cursor pointer py4 px6 bg here pnb text white rounded dash xl uh, go to property and this should also have a margin top six so that I have good space up there um no i did not get that but maybe if i add the block no but this should be an inline block anyways inline block because i don't want to fill out the whole screen but why isn't margin top working Need to inspect this margin top six maybe it is yes it's been overridden since we are on the last element in this here okay um maybe here rather can say class name and be dash six no it's still not working um okay how can i fix that think if I add an empty element but that's not very good so let me just remove this and not spend too much time and then instead on these I can say class name and be dash two so that looks like it did and then I can say empty six great so let's copy this div and replace this one save and now both of these has this go to property button perfect so that means that i can go to the to-do list and set this to done okay the next one will be a quick one that's the my properties page i can just make a copy of this code here and then go here create a new folder called my prop properties and in there the page.tsx paste it rename this to my properties rename the title to my properties close the main close that close that correctly and then export default my properties page and save so if I then go to there again, go to my properties, I have the title there, nice. So then I just want the properties list here. So I can just open up the landlord page, which is identical. And then if I then just copy this grid, I do not need the call span and everything there just the grid with the property list paste it below there import this one import property list save go back and then these are my properties of course this is just static and i'm going to uh, pass in the correct id and similar here later so that i get only my own properties anyways it was very quick so i can just set this to done okay so now over to something a little bit more fun we are going to create the inbox page so let me just go to the project here and then you can go to visual studio code and i can make a copy 
copy of all of this and go here create a new folder called inbox which will also be the url for this and then a new file page.tsx and i can paste it here just rename this to be inbox can remove these two and rename the page to inbox page close the main close the return and close the function as a return inbox sorry not return but export default inbox page so if i save now and go back here just go to directly to slash inbox great and then below here i want to list out the conversations and for each of the conversations i want a component so we can begin by creating that one so i want a new folder in the components folder called inbox and a file called conversation sorry conversation.tsx of course um yeah we can just say const conversation create an arrow function return conversation and then export default conversation now we can import it and use it on the inbox page so import conversation and we can then add a couple of them here conversation 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 so if i say now you can see three conversations there great but they can't look like this obviously so let's go to the component again just replace this with a new div give it a class name of px6 and py4 um, I want the border on this and I want the border to be border gray 300 and I want rounded corners so rounded dash xl save um, that is great I will fix the spacing between these soon um, in here I want to show the name of the person we are talking to so p class name um, give this uh, margin bottom 6 and text xl john doe and then below here a link to the conversation page um, I think I can just say p I think I'm going to convert this to a link later so let's just say class name uh, text air pnb dark and go to conversation great so um, if i then just on this top element here say cursor pointer you can see here that the mouse it looks more like something you can actually click on um, and then i'm going to fix the spacing between these so on this element i can say space dash y4 nice and then yeah that was it for this task so now i can set this to done okay so we have come a long way now on the design and the last page we're going to create now is the detail page for the chat so let me just go back to visual studio code and make a copy of this one just forget about the space x close and close and then inside the inbox folder not one component but this one create one more id because this needs to have a dynamic url and then in there page.tsx um yeah i don't need this one and this should rather say conversation page because now we are on a detail page so then we can close the main just add something in here so that we can test that the url is working correctly return no sorry 
export oops whoops export default and then conversation page so if i save now go back to the project here and just add something random here you can see astf which comes from here great okay so um here uh, i just want to have a list of uh, all of the messages so i'm going to create one more component here that can say um conversation detail like that and this will actually hold uh, all of the button the messages the form for sending etc um, so i need to import this but we need to create it first so let's just copy this name and then in components in box then we can say conversation detail .tsx const conversation detail create an arrow function sorry equals a return dev add something in there and then export default conversation detail then we need to import it here import conversation detail save so now it still says asdf but it doesn't come from here it comes from in here i can see there great so um we need some styling on this for example we need to set the max height and we need to make this scrollable for this is where we want to have the uh, messages div class max dash h 400 pixels add this inside its brackets so that tailwind will fix this for us set overflow to be auto i want it to be a flex and a flex columns and space dash y4 so that everything in here has some space between each other because this will then be the the messages itself so we can create one message that we have sent and one message that we have received so that we can see the difference between these so div class name and then we set the width to be 80 percent of the screen um, py4 and px dash sorry px dash six and i want this to have rounded corners so rounded xl and then uh, bg gray 200 and then in here i want to show the name of the person who sent this so p class name font bold text gray 500 and then close that one and just say john doe and then below here the message just add some random info close this div and when i then save it go back you can see here what the message will look like and then my messages will be on this side and sending automatically to this yes since it's blue and on this side you will understand that it's your information so it will look fairly similar so let's make a copy of this one uh, my name um, code with stein i want this to be bg blue 200 and we can also say ml dash well, margin left 20 percent if i save now we get the blue and it's on this side of the screen great um, below here I want the form for sending messages so actually we need one more div or we can use a fragment if you don't want an extra div so close the fragment and then below here we can say div plus mt-4 so it has some space up in case the screen is filled with information um, I want some space in here so py4 and px6 i want this to be a flex container because i want the 
form on left side and the send button on the right side. I want to have a border to separate this a little bit from the messages. And then border gray 300, space dash, space dash x4, so a space between the input field and the button. And then rounded dash xl. And then on the left side here, the input field. Give this a type of, uh, sorry, type is text. Um, we can have a placeholder. Type your message. And we can have a class name, w dash full, so it fills out the screen, uh, the part of the screen that's available. Padding 2, bg gray 200, and rounded dash xl. Now we can close it. So now we can see that it fills out the whole screen. But that's just until we add a button on the right side here. Um, so this button I actually want to be a contain nice or a component because I want the button to be reusable. So we can say custom button and close it like that. And then I will show you how to send information to this component. But first I just want to save oh, it's crashing. Great. And then in here in the components we can create a new folder called forms since this is a form field and then custom button.tsx um, const custom button create an arrow function return div button and then export default custom button and then we just need to import this at the top here import custom button and then the error is gone okay nice but it can't look like that so let's add some styling to it um i want this to fill out the whole screen if it's possible if not i want to just make it possible to uh, style this from the parent so w dash full and uh, we can set the padding in the y or vertical direction to be uh, 4 the bg should be air bnb and if you hover it it should be bg air bnb dark uh, the text should be white so text white and I want the corners to be rounded, so rounded dash XL. I want to transition it so that it has a full smooth fade and a cursor pointer. Um, so if I save now, it starts to look like a button. Um, okay, so how can we then fix the width, the label, and what happens when you click on this? So that's where a little bit of this TypeScript magic is coming in. Let's say that uh, we down here want to pass in a label. So we can say a label and we can pass in the string send like this. Then see that I get a warning. Um, string is not assignable because it's not available to be assigned to this component. Um, so in here we can say label but it's still not working because it's not defined even though we try to push it in here so we need up here to um, create something called an interface so interface um, custom button props so we define what properties that we can send so do not add the equal sign here, it's just interface, the name, and then the curly braces. And then here we want to allow a property called label, and this should be a string. And then you can see that we still get the warning down here, it's can't find label. So we need to be able to pass this in, this interface, and set it to be used on this one. And to do that, we need to convert this 
component to be a React functional component. Do that, we just say colon react.fc and then we add these two. And in here we can pass in react, no sorry, custom button props, but it's still not working, but we are very close now. In here we we'll pass parameters to this function, add two curly braces and then label. And now it is working. So now we get send, which comes from this label here, passed in there, into this and into this. And if we try to change this to something else than a string, for example, a number, then you see here we get the warning, type number is not assignable. And this is some part of the TypeScript uh, magic that won't allow you to use other types than what you're defining here. So let's make it possible to have an on-click event as well. So add the semicolon there and then on-click. And when we on-click this, we just say void to say that this is a function we are expecting. And then we pass it in here on-click and just move this to a separate line so that it is a little bit clearer on-click. So when we click this div, we want to call this function. So I'm use the curly braces there and just say on click. If I save now, we are now expecting this here. But as you can see here, we actually get a new warning because, okay, you haven't, uh, we are missing this type. If we want to make this uh, not, uh, not required, we can just add a question mark there and the warning is now gone, but we want this to be mandatory or required. So here we can say on click and when that is called, we can create a new uh, function, just console.log clicked. So later we will call something here to send this information to the user. Uh, event handlers cannot be passed. Okay, so event handler cannot be passed. Um, if you need interactivity, please consider oh, sorry, consider converting this to a client component. So right now this is actually a server component, this conversation detail. So this expects things to happen on the server and on the server we do not have something called on click. So we need to specify that this is a client component. So then we just say use client at the top and save. And if I then go back, click send, you can see down here that we are clicked. Great. Um, last but not least, I want to be able to specify a class name here. Oops. Class name. And I want to pass in that I don't want this to be more than 100 pixel in the width. But then I get this new warning because it's not allowed because we haven't added it up here, but we can say class name, oops, class name, but this is not required. So string, pass it in down here, and then we just need to figure out how we can pass it in into this one. And it's not that hard, we just need to convert this to a curly brace and then back ticks. And then we close it the same way, back tick, curly brace. This makes it allow to use JavaScript in here. So at the end, we can just pass in class name like this. If I save now, go back, you can see that this is now 100 pixel width. And then we just need to say text center to center everything. Nice. And this page is also already mobile friendly. So we don't have to do anything more here now. Nice. So that means that I now can set this task to done. Nice. So now it's time to start working on user menu pop-up. So that when we click on this, I want to show a menu here. First of all, since we are not logged in now, I want to show a login and sign up button. But first I want to make it possible to at least click it and just show a div below here. So I just want to close everything and see what we built last time. 
um, we have this nav bar here and we have the user nav um, okay so when we click this button I want to show uh, a div below here so we need to introduce a few things here first of all I just want to convert this to a client component as well because we're going to use click events here and a little bit other things then we can import state from react so import use state so this is the state management to make it easy to keep track of when we click something we can store it as a temporary variable and then um, since we have imported this now we can create a variable called const create the brackets here is open and set is open so then this is then the name of the variable and this is the function that we are using to change this or toggle it because we can't directly say is open equals false and similar because that's not how states are working you'll understand soon and then we say equals use state to tell next that this is a state variable and what the default value should be to make it easier for us to test now we can just set this to true and we will change this to false in a little while um, then below this button we can create an if statement and to create a very easy if statement here we just use the curly brace and say is open uh, and 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 then parentheses and then we close it like this you see here I get the warning because expression is expected okay so let's create a div in here some things and close the div and this is then actually an expression so when this is true this will be rendered so let's give this a class name of w-220 pixels and I want this to have a property absolute because we want to be able to put it uh, directly below this one so we can actually test this while we are writing now if I save now you can see ASDF at the below there um, so we need to move it down a little bit more so top dash 70 pixels if I save okay that's a little bit too much 60 pixels that might be better we will test more soon and I want to say right zero so um, that the right side of this which is 200 pixels that's a BG white 200 and a border so it's a little bit easier to see so now you can see that the right side here is aligning with this one and that's because you said right zero okay we also want some corner radius on this so uh, rounded dash XL and a shadow MD sorry and keep going back and forth even though I'm seeing it here and that looks like it is it I'm going to make the buttons show in there so I don't need any spacing right now I just need one more div here if I'm not just sorry I can just add it up to this one I think so flex flex dash call because I want the buttons to be below each other and cursor pointer and then in here I can say P just for some testing yes great um, I want to have a component in here called menu link because they're going to look identical they're going to have a label and they're going to have a click event so let's create a component first before we start importing it so in navbar here we create a new file called menu link.tsx and then we create it const menu link equals create an arrow function return use the parentheses dev 
just add something there export default menu link and save and if I then import this up here, import menu link, then we can use it here. Nice. Okay, so here we also want to be able to pass in the label, which can be log in. Then I get the warning because we haven't uh, said what we're going to use here. But anyway, let's add use client here since this will be a client component. Um, and then this uh, needs an interface menu link props convert this to react.fc and pass in menu link props and then in here for the parameters we can pass in label and then we can just use it here label okay there is something wrong of course <laughs> I forgot to assign it up here label and this should be a string so just add the semicolon and save and then I get the log in there perfect so then I just want to add some styling to this class name px-5 py-4 and when you hover it it should be a little bit grayish so hover bg gray 100 and I want a transition effect on this. So now it looks like a pretty menu. Let's add one more for sign up. Sign up. So then we have two buttons here. Perfect. And since we are already have this open, we can add this on click event here. So on click void pass it in here on click and then we can add it to this link here sorry to this div on click and when we click this we call on click and we should also have this cursor cursor pointer save great uh, we probably have errors here now because we haven't defined this on click. So when we do that, we call this console log clicked button and save. So let's just open up the inspector to see that the click event is working and it is nice. So let's go back to the to do list and set this task to done. Actually. It's not done yet because we can't click and toggle it. Sorry. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and fix this. So on the do, 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 this button up here, this button that is this one. Let's move this to a separate line just so it like that. I have more properties and one I like to have one on each line so on click equals set is open equals not is open so um, sorry you need to create an arrow function like this when I pass in functions uh, with options um, so what this does is that it takes the value is open pass it in so if it's true it will be set to false and if it's false it will be set to true because this will just opposite this variable so if I save now I can click this and it's hiding and showing nice and now we can also set this default to be false so it's not showing when we are refreshing only when we click to show it great so now I can set it to done Okay, then over to one more fun task, creating a reusable modal window. Because I want to have a window popping up on the middle of the screen when for example I click login or sign up and similar. But this needs to be reusable so that we can just uh, pass in properties and make it much easier. So that means that we need to go and create one more component. So in this components folder, we can create one more called modals 
and then one more called model.tsx and this is then the reusable but we want to create one more for example for login so we're going to begin very easy and then build on this so we need to pass in use client because this is a client function or a client component and then const modal we can just at the beginning call this uh, react.fc this can be empty right now equals like that then return and uh, export default modal and we can add a div in here just for testing okay the type argument list can't be empty so it has to be like this for now i think that will work and for testing this we can open up layout.tsx and import the model there import model from there great and just append it at the end of the body so if i save now you can see that we get astf there if i go to the front page it will also be there um, I want this to appear on the middle of the screen on a blackish background. So let's start coding more for the module. Um, let's add a class name of flex and um, items center because I want everything centered on the screen and inside there. And justify center. So it's both horizontally and vertically centered. And um, I want this to be fixed so we can't scroll when this is open. So fixed. And we need to set the inset to zero so that it's from the top and left. And then set value, C value to 40 so it's above everything or 50 so it's a prettier number. And then bg dash black divide this by 60 so that we get an opacity. So if I save now, you can see that we have a div all over here. I can't click anything below behind here now because we have this div here. Now you can see here ASDF, which comes from here, is in the middle of the screen. But the middle of the screen can't look like this. I want a white div there, for example. Um, so we can begin by adding a new div here. Oops, 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 oops. Div class name. Set this to be relative so that we can have things uh, absolutely positioned and similar in here. And then on mobile devices, I want this to be 90% of the screen and on medium uh, screens. MD. I want the width to be 80% of the screen and on very big screens or large screens I want the width to be 700 pixels so that this is a default layout for all of this when it's going to be used. And then we can add a MY6 in case it's larger than the screen and always get some space above and below and MX Auto, mm, I no, actually don't think I need that one. And the height to be Auto on this one. So then I can close the div, save. So actually it's moved out there now, probably because the relativity is similar, but let's set MX Auto. No, oh, sorry, it's not the relativity, um, it's the width I set. So if I inspect this, we should see that we have a div here and it's centered on the screen. Nice. Um, in here, I want one more div. So it's a little bit div mania, but that's just how these models typically work. Div class name. Uh, and this should have the transition that uh, fades it up and down as we open the screen. So we need to 
use the backticks here again because here we need to pass in variables which you can first translate um, duration can be set to uh, 600 so it's a little bit slow animation I think the default one is 400 so you don't need this either age uh, the height can be set to full and we can set um, right now just uh, translate y0 so right now it will be centered on the screen and I will fix the animation soon um, and also we can set the opacity to 100 which will then be the default value when you are seeing it but when it's hidden it will be just uh, 10 so that you can see the fade in effect so now we can close this div and add one more div in here and then the class name w dash full and the height can be automatic so we just fill out whatever is available in there and we can add the turn oh, I don't think I need a translate on this one but we can say rounded xl and relative and flex flex column because I want all of the elements in here to be below each other then flex and flex call because I want everything in here to be below each other and then bg white just add some random information there so then you can now see that it's still centered on the screen and we have this white background with the rounded corners great so it's starting to take shape at the top of this um, box i want a header uh, where i have a title and a close button so let's begin with the header here you can add some space in here and say header and give this a class name of flex items center and we want to use the flex box because then we can have things on different places in here p-6 rounded t so that the top corners are also rounded just like the parent justify center and relative because here i want things to be, have an absolute value inside and border b head so if you save this go back now you can see that we get this border as you can see here barely I will come, it will look more better when we add more to this box um, in here we can begin with the close button so div class name p-3 absolute left Three, so it's a little bit from the left side and when we hover it I want the BG sorry the background to be BG gray 300 rounded full and cursor pointer cursor pointer and then in here we can just say close div so then we have it here and you can see this close effect um, I think maybe the parent here should have some spacing py2 sorry that's not correct it already have it padding six there um my2 maybe no still not working um okay I may it might be this absolute thing that we have in here that does this um, if I say a height maybe it will work automatically yes so then we have some space above and below but we can change this if we go to hero icons to a close icon instead that look always look better so we can copy the JSX that's probably better I think in one of the previous parts I copied SVG but this has the right format as you can see here with the capital L and similar but we can just remove this save go back and then we have this close button much better 
And then on the middle of the screen, I want the title. So below this div that is absolute, I can say div or h2 class name text lg font bold and here the title okay nice um, inside down here i want the content so below the header you can add a section class name relative i don't think that i need the relative class name p-6 and then just add some random information there and now you can see how the border is looking like great um so then we need to do some modifications to this to make it uh, more dynamic this for example needs to be dynamic and this needs to be dynamic so let's make it possible to pass in a label so we need to add this interface just like we've done previously interface modal props label and this is a string so then we can pass it in here modal props and the same in this list of oops parameters pass in label and then we use the label here label and then if i go to the layout we can pass in label here, modal test. Great. So then that is working. Next step is the content. So this will then be a React element we want to have here. So we want to pa pass in. Uh, sorry, we want to make it possible to pass in HTML. So content, and then we just say React dot React element. So then. Uh, TypeScript will know what it should expect, pass in the content, and then we can render the content by just saying this. So if I save now, go to layout, we get this warning. So let's create the content. I uh, think I can say, um, maybe I can just pass in some elements here for now content no this is not expecting a string it's expecting some content so let's define the content by saying content like that and const content equals a function like that return p yo um jsx element is not assignable did you mean to call this expression um, like that? Is that correct? Yo, yes, that is correct. It is correct, but it's still not what it should be like. Let me remove this return and set it like this. Use parentheses and then do not call it, but pass it in like that. Yo 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 yes now this is working great so that was step one of this next i want to add some state handling to this so we can go back to modal tsx and then we need to import a few things so we can begin by importing um use state again from react and then in here we can um, uh, uh, define some state variable const show modal set show modal equals use state and then pass in the default value which should be a value called is open okay so where did this come from we need it to be passed in a pair so is open this is a boolean value we need to pass it in here as well is open so now the error here is gone perfect but we need to specify it down here so is open equals true 
and use these parent uh, curly braces so you can pass in a value there. So save and save, go back, it's still showing and everything is as it was supposed to be. Um, so uh, if I then can handle, if this is not showing then we want to have the element below the screen. So on one of these, uh, the one with the translation and the backtick, we can add a test to this around this translate. So you say show modal. If this is true, then we can pass in translate y zero. And if it's not true, then we say translate y full. So then it's pushed all the way below the screen and then close that one. And we can have one more around this opacity, but let's just copy this, replace the opacity 100. And if it is true again, um, actually I think I just can say here opacity 100. And if it's not true, then opacity 10, so that it will give us a fading and sliding effect. Yes, that looks great. So we can save this. And uh, if I set this to be false here, save. Okay, it's not take, been taken care of. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anything wrong with my code. So I will just continue and come back. Yes, this was supposed to be there anyway. This was supposed to be there anyway. Yes, uh, I will come back to it very soon. We can continue more with the state handling. And then we can say that if not is open. So if it's not supposed to be open, if it's false already, we should just say return null and save. And now it's actually gone all the way. So it's not even rendered on the screen. Um, but that's not what we want right now because we still want to test a few more things here. And we need to set something called the use effect. So then it was automatically imported up there. So this use effect here will be called every time this uh, component is rendered. And here we can say set show modal to true. So then this will uh, set this value to be true so it will automatically show sorry now i was that was not correctly um we need to pass in this value so when this is loaded we pass it in there and every time this updates we also want to set that function so how this works is that if this value changes from true to false or false to true this function will be run and we will set modal show to this value. Um, we also need one function up here for closing. So let's add close void, not void, but uh, the parentheses void, pass it in here, close. And then we can uh, use it here, const handle close so when we click on the close button we want to call this function here and we want to call it by using something called use callback which is something that comes from django that will return a memoized version of the callback um, and this is sort of like caching the result so then we use this to create an arrow function set modal uh, sorry, set show modal, set this to be false. Um, okay, I have a warning here now. An argument is not provided, so we need to provide here close. Close. So when this is clicked, we will call this function here. And then we set set uh, timeout. 
create an arrow function close 300 so what this does is that after 300 milliseconds this timeout is run and we call this close function and the reason why we need these 300 milliseconds is because that when we set this to be false this translate here will kick in and move it out of the screen and then it will wait 300 milliseconds before it is removed from the screen um, and I think that is actually it so if I just remove that now it's removed from here and we will do some more testing on this in the next task when we are building the reusable login component so if there are any mistakes right now I will fix them soon anyway I can set this to done like that okay so it's time to reuse this modal window and make it pop up on the screen so it's a little bit easier now that we can test the in and out and similar so let's go back to visual studio code and create a new modal so in modals there we say login modal.tsx and then const login modal equals create an arrow function return just add something there export default login modal and then this needs to be imported into the layout just like we did with the modal here so let's just add login modal instead and append it at the bottom here so as you see now there are no warnings because we haven't told this component that it is a modal window yet and before we go to that part we need to uh, install a new package to the project so if we stop the server we can install it by saying npm install sustand so this is a sort of a global state handling that we can use with hooks and hooks are also some sort of a global functionality um, so we can click something in one component and tell the parent or the root component what to do so uh, now that that is installed we can go here and then inside the app folder create a new folder called hooks and in the hooks folder call a file called use login modal.ts and here i'm just going to use a plain typescript so it's just ts and not tsx um, this might be a little bit much information right now but once we start using this it will probably make more sense i hope so we can import sustain by saying import create from sustain and then we create an interface for the login modal store so this is then a store where we store information about the login modal window for example is open boolean um, open so this is then a function for opening the login modal and one for closing it so then we have these different things that we're going to be able to interact with this store and then we can say const use login modal and this use word um, is just a typical way that we uh, uh, define these types of classes or functions equals create login modal store pass in set because we are going to set things here oops up to one too many parentheses like that so it's supposed to be closed by that and then in here I say is open so this defaults to false just comma there open and then create a f uh, arrow function set is open set this to true so when we call the open function we set the value of this store and this property is open to be true 
and on close we do the exact exact same thing but opposite so here we set is open to false um, so this is, doesn't look too complicated and then we can just say oops export default use login model so that's everything we need in order to make this global at least so if I now go back to login modal, we can do some more changes to this one. First, we can set this to be client component, so use client. Then we can import the modal, which should be this sort of parent. Um, we need some state handling internally here, so import use state from React. And we can import the use login model we just created. Import use model login model, of course. And then this can just be like it is. And then in here we create one more or define const login model. So we create a new instance of this store use login model, like a function like this. Uh, the use state will be used here later when you're introducing the form, so we don't have to think about that right now. Um, then we can define the content that we want to show inside the modal window. So const content equals parentheses h2 class name mb-6 text to xl and then welcome to Django BNB, please log in. Um, so that's everything we need there. Um, so then down in the return, we actually just want to pass in the modal window, the parent, and say is open equals login modal dot is open. So then we just take the variable from this sustained here, this one, true or false, pass it into the modal window from here, and close. So if we close this logo, uh, login modal, we call this function on the modal, on the reusable window. So login modal dot close. So then it will be closed. Sorry, when this is called we call this and then we close it. And then we have the title or the label. I think I call it um, modal. Yes, label, not title. Label, log in. And the content should be content. So now we can close this modal there. So there are no errors. Things looks okay. So then I want to fix that if I click this now and then log in, that this login window should pop up. So let's find the user nav bar there. And then we need to import this use login model. So import. Uh, use login modal and then we need to define it in here so const login modal equals use login modal and just uh, copy that and when we then click this login button then we can create sorry it was supposed to be like that Uh, isn't this correct? Yes. Click the button and then we can say login module dot open and save. So hopefully if I click this now, the login window appears. Perfect. Um, okay, the close button there is not working. That should be something in this modal window. Handle close, yes. Um, okay, the close button is this div here. So 
So on click, handle close. So if I click now, it will remove. Perfect. Uh, we should also close this menu here when we click the window. So uh, then here I can say set is open to false. So if I now click, click, and you can see that the window there is gone. Nice. Okay, so now that is reusable. Um, sorry, reusable, it's workable. So now I just want to insert a form on the login window. Um, so let's go back there. And then below this h2 inside the login module.tsx we can create a form so form i think tsx uh, expression must have one parent element yes so let's add a empty fragment and then in here is the input type email and set this to be a class name of w dash full we want some uh, height on this so age 54 uh, we want the border and set this border gray 100 and rounded dash xl okay oops need to self close this and we should set the placeholder here as well. So placeholder, your email address, email address, save. Um, okay, the padding did not work, or the height, sorry. This needs to be height 54 pixels. And we need some spacing on the left side there. That was not good, and this can be a little bit darker so px4 yes much better so then we can add one more for the password so just copy this your password this needs to be type password and then we can say class name um, space dash y4 so we get some automatic spacing between these and then below here a button so i think i can just import the custom button that we created earlier so uh, custom button and uh, this should have a label submit on click so let's just say control.log test and close nice so then we have a very simple and reusable login form. Maybe we don't even need this title since we have the one up in the header. And if there are any errors, I just want to show them here between the input and there. So here we can say div class name p5 p-5 bg airbnb. So it's red. It makes sense that that's an error. Text white rounded dash xl opacity can be set to 80 so it's not too bright color the error message great so that was the login component as well so then i can go here and set this task to done okay the last part then before we start with the backend is to set up the login, uh, sorry, the module for the sign up. So that's going to be identical with the login module. So that means that I can make a copy of this login module store. Just copy and paste everything and save this as use sign up module, sorry, module.ts. And I can just rename everything in here to sign up. And these two should also be renamed to sign up. So that means I can just close this because it's done. And this login module here, copy everything and paste it as sign up 
modal.tsx. Then just rename a few things, sign up. The title of the box or module should be sign up. Um, then we need to import the use sign up modal instead. Use that, sign up modal. And rename this to be sign up modal. Um, here we need two passwords, so it's your password, and then below there the repeat password. Repeat password, uh, sign up modal, dot close, and dot close, or is open and dot close. So that's everything there. Next step, import this to the layout, import sign up modal, and just pause it in below here, sign up modal. And this will not be rendered on the screen unless the is open actually is set to true. If not, they're just ignored. So now we can import this again, use sign up modal, define it here, const sign up modal equals use sign up modal and then activate the button to do the same thing as this one. So I can actually remove this console log, this console log, set this open so we close it and use the sign up modal there instead. Save. So if I then go to the project, hopefully if I click this it will show me the sign up form. Perfect. Close. And if I click the login it will show this instead. Nice. So that was very quick. So let's go into the to-do list in Eraser and say done. And that was it for this time. If you have any questions about today's code, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.